Hi, I'm John Perkis and welcome to Actual. You're yeah. just going to do it from now on, right? <laughs> How much do you cost? I'm uh, pretty expensive, mate. Dr. Locum rates. I have to pay NHS rate. So we're doing the top five. Well, is it drinking games or is it board games that are good for drinking to? Top five board games, card games that you are good for drinking games. But it's not just drinking too, right? It's they they work as a drinking game. So they, they instead of what were you saying, fuzzy duck, fives, fives, ring of fire. I mean, twenty one. Thinking, thinking about it, this was the games that I basically played the majority of my life. Right. Because before I got into the hobby of board gaming, I was very much. You were just a raging drinker. Exactly. I mean, at uni, these are the games you play, right? And they're generally games that you didn't need anything for, right? Mm. Like fives or 21s or whatnot. But these are not that list. Before we go on, I should just say, this is uh, Dr. Ed Hope, if you don't know him. Um, he has a great channel called Dr. Hope Sick Notes. Got that right? Good. I will pay you after. I've heard of it, yeah. yeah cool. And um, it turns out he likes board games. So he contacted me one day and said that he watched my channel. And I was like, well, great, I'm honoured. You were, you're, more of a, you're more of a dice tower guy, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, this is why we're doing the top five. Uh, yeah, yeah. But we're also here at a festival called Camp Wildfire and we're running the board game lounge. And we thought before the festival kicks off, I mean, people are coming in in the next half an hour, we would just do a quick video. And because people like to have a drink at festivals. Ed pretends to be a doctor YouTube channel, but he's got major board game pedigree. He's been running a board game tent at this festival for seven years. And honestly, the library's good. I mean, there's some bad games in there, but... <laughs> People they're for the people, for yeah, they're for the people. You know the games I'm talking about. <laughs> what makes a good drinking right. game? And for me, it's got to be something that you make a mistake, you have to drink, but also that it, it becomes so much easier to make that mistake as the game goes on because the game requires something of you that gets harder the more drunk you get. Okay, I never even thought about that. <laughs> okay, as a yeah, game. I'm, I'm taking but I like it. the kind of gotcha thing. I also thought of a game where you don't necessarily need like full attention. I, right. I, so there's some games you obviously do, but some that kind of play on because actually in a social setting, the game is often the social lubricant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to be like, guys, can you listen? I want to play this game now. I don't know why I turned into a proper cockney, <laughs> but that's what happens. And then- Oh, isn't that what you are? <laughs> and then, but actually you kind of want a game that's happening and people can drop in and out and it's still there. Yeah. Otherwise you can be that horrible kind of guy who's introduced the board game who's like pulling their hair. Oh out yeah. And... I think dexterity games work really well because you're just, when you're drunk, it's going to get a bit harder or anything that requires your sort of, there's some connection that I'm sure you could talk about on your videos between the brain and the mouth. This is it. Let's do a deep dive on <laughs> yeah. neuroanatomy. Right. So on that note, should we dive Let's into it? Let's do it, yeah. yeah. Number five. Number five. <laughs> My number five is, a, the number five is a good slot because you can put in a bit of a random one. Yeah. But I have gone with code names. And you might think, Bold. dude, that is not a drinking game. But having run a board game tent at a festival you should know. Years, it works really well for the point I said before, is that you can have it out, people can still be chatting, and it also gets rid of one of the bad things about code names, where people have to wait for the, the clue to come. And people can just drink, chat, and they mm. say, oh, the clue's here, and then you have that moment where you connect in the game, there's a bit of laughter. The, it's not the most obvious drinking game, but in my experience, it does work really well. And of all those kind of you know games, it, it has, it is an absolute classic. Oh yeah, I mean, Codenames might be creeping up into my favorite game of all time. Like, I love it that much. I mean, I'm just saying it right now. It's not on my drinking games list. But because where where would you, you're just drinking casually throughout. There's no like- That is true. I'm thinking more of the setting in a right. kind of, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. drinking scenario rather than you lose, you have to drink. So maybe yeah. it's invalid. That's why to... it's at number five. Right? <laughs> That's, you could always sneak in at number five. To be fair, we were making the list just before the video. And Don't Ed, make excuses. It, that, Ed, that is my Ed, legit number five. Ed, Ed was saying to me, oh, I only know four games, John. <laughs> what can I put at five? And I'm like, just code names, fine. <laughs> All right, number five on a proper list. Uh, actually, check my phone. No um, messages. No, <laughs> no. YouTube no hasn't friends. called. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, number five is uh, Jungle Speed, which is like a. Isn't that what all the kids are taking tonight? <laughs> Yeah, Jungle Speed is a like a grabbing, like reaction game, like a speed game. Have you played it? I've never heard of it. 
So cool. Jungle Speed has like a big wooden thing that you grab. Basically, you just take it in turns to flip over a card, and if your pattern matches on your card with someone else's that's already turned over, you are then like head to head. You have to grab the thing first. Yeah. So it's like Snap. That, uh, I, I also <laughs> hate it. At, you know, I, from teaching board games to people, I hate it when people say <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what game it's We've similar. We've talked about this That before. really winds me up. But like, you do it to me. Uh, yeah, I know, what? that's what I do. <laughs> But but people it, do that with like diseases. They're like, oh yeah, so it's uh, a bit like this. Yeah, like, well, that's a good way of learning about diseases. Yeah. Actually, oh, okay. Well, it's a good way to learn about board games. <laughs> Last week when I was at the kids' one, I taught, um, hey, that's my fish. Oh to yeah. Someone, and they said like, oh yeah, it's a little bit like Cluedo or something. And I was just like, <laughs> and then I actually had to sort of say, yeah, yeah, yeah you move things on a board. Number four is Dodolido. Heard of that one? No. I'm bringing out, see, I'm bringing out the hipster stuff. Yeah, yeah. We've got ourselves a mainstream board <laughs> game here. He starts with code names. Who knows what's next? <laughs> Uno, then we're heading into... Better well, change that. Dodolido is actually from the family of cockroach games. So it doesn't have cockroach in the title, but cockroach poker and there are others that may appear on this list. Dodolido is not necessarily my favorite, but it's great for drinking you are flipping over a card like everyone on your turn you just put a card into the center and there's animals on the cards every time you put something out you've got to say something because there's sort of very specific rules like if there's no match you say no and if there's like um a pair of flamingos and they match you say flamingo but there's this tricky thing where if there are two matches out of these three things so let's say there's two pink animals and there's two flamingos you say dodolido and so it, it's kind of like the drinking games of, of old where there's something exact that you have to say at the right time and it's coming to you and you can't work it out, your brain can't do it quick enough, but you have to say it quickly because if you pause, then you have to pick up all the cards and you know start again. And if you say the wrong thing, you have to pick up all the cards and start again. So that's the perfect opportunity to drink. Um, and so it reminds me of like 21, do you play that one? Yeah. And I guess Fuzzy Duck, yeah, because it's where you go around and you just got to say the right thing and then someone screws you up by saying, like, yeah. You know. And you can't really prepare ahead because the person before you dictates what you're about to do. Right. So it's the anxiety of waiting for your turn. And it's always so easy on those games on someone else's go. You're like, why don't yeah, they say yeah, about yeah. your go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something happens. Um, which does lead on. Are you done with that one? Of course, yeah. It does lead on to my one as well. So Cockroach Soup. Part the same line, very much the same thing. It's a great game, yeah. For the same reasons. It's so simple and silly, but it just gives you just enough complexity just to have that doubt in your brain. Like you see yeah. that carrot and you're like, hang on a minute, don't say carrot, don't say carrot, <laughs> don't say it. And it's just, it, you, you, even though there's only four vegetables, <laughs> yeah, right. you, 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 for some reason, someone will always say a vegetable that's not in the pack. <laughs> like we've had someone just come out with turnip. It's like none of them are even a turnip. And that's where obviously you have to down your drink. The yeah, classic. Yeah. Oh, where that's someone good, yeah. really wrecks it. So yeah, um, that line of games though, they, they all work pretty mm. much for drinking. Very simple. And also there's something about the themes they choose mm. that actually buy into the silliness that yeah. suddenly everyone's just saying a load of vegetables. It's yeah. inherently funny. And that you're making, the, the, there's like a theme to cockroach soup, which is you're making a soup for this blind woman. And so she doesn't know what you're putting in. So you're saying carrot, but she doesn't want lots of carrots. So you, so like you'll <laughs> say pepper when it is still a carrot or whatever. Do like, you ever to, add that in the rules explanation? I know. I so might to add have the done. theme. Yeah, right? yeah. That's what you're missing out. That's what. No. Right. No, Given I the think, motivation. Yeah, So exactly. people need to know, I need to get this right for the. the for most thing. games, I wouldn't do that. But for like the occasional one, if it, I feel like with that game, it sort of helps people understand why that. Why are we doing this? <laughs> so number three, my till I take this one. Yeah. I will take the classic. Now this is really the game that almost defines the board game tent at this festival. Okay. Rhino Hero, <laughs> a game for seven-year-olds, I think. Sure, yeah. It's, there's, it fixes everything wrong with Jenga. Yeah. You don't have to set it up. Mm. It has the humor that Jenga just completely misses. Uh, you know, you're putting a, a rhino on a, uh, essentially a house of cards or a tower of cards and waiting for him to fall off. Uh, and also, it doesn't, what I've also noticed, Jenga is blooming loud. 
when it falls okay, over yeah, yeah, on yeah. the tables, it's yeah, like, whoa, because yeah, yeah. we have Jenga here as well. But Rhino here is just the ultimate. And it looks a bit more impressive when you mm. see this kind of- Can go huge... way higher, right? The only bad thing about it is when you lose the Rhino, you know, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, oh, he falls down. Uh... So we do have a couple of copies here with a Lego man on. Okay. Yeah, but hey. We're getting know. real world advice here. Like. <laughs> Most people at home aren't playing board games in tents with like loads of random strangers, but I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. There you go. This is it. But I, I found it works everywhere. It's also only eight quid on Amazon. Yeah. Affiliate links down below. And <laughs> it's, I just find it's an absolute winner. It's so silly. It's kind of small. It just, and also if some people don't know it, they kind of have that, what is going on there? Yeah. They see this stack that, of cards yeah. on, a, on a table. like. It lures it's them over. It's kind of like the one the games we were talking about before when people are shouting out carrot and like, no, it, they both have that silliness yeah. that people buy into. I think, and also if it falls down on your turn, that's probably mm. a shot. Number three for me is Spicy, which is a great new bluffing game. Um, you played Spicy? No, but you've told me about Spicy. Yeah, you need to get into Spicy. I brought okay. it, we can play it. They all sound like drugs, your games. Is this some kind <laughs> of, is this what we're really here yeah. to do? To be fair, the other two sound like, they're, they're all going to sound like jokes, so yeah. Cockroach Poker is a great bluffing game, Skull's a great bluffing game. But Spicy, I think, is probably best for drinking, just because kind of the way it works, the, the, the way you make mistakes in the game, I, I, that seems to be what I want for a drinking game. You're trying to play cards in order, and sometimes you won't have the right cards, so you have to lie and pretend that you do. And then other people call you out, and they say, like, I don't think that is. So then you check and whoever's right uh, gets rewarded with cards and of course the other person can drink. One reason to prefer spicy is that you actually get a winner. Whereas I think with cockroach poker, like just a bit I of a like shame. That. You love that it's just a loser. Well, just a loser. Yeah. And I open with that when I teach it. Wow, well, yeah. So this is a game where there's only one loser and people love that as an idea. I'm sure they do, yeah. It's a great <laughs> twist on like what they're used to, yeah. So number two is blurble. And every time I say a name, you just pick you're just... games that just don't exist. No, uh, honestly, but I, I guess I like the niche game. You know, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you watch my but channel. But that's why people are tuning in. That's exactly. why you watch my channel, not the Dice Tower, right? Right? I've never heard of the Dice Tower. Okay. Um, no, you only inspired to do this list. <laughs> 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 Mate, he'll have you have you on in a second. It looks like it's for kids. It's for kids, right? But so is Rhino Hero, so we're fine. And you literally just flip a card and it's got a picture on, let's say it's a chair, and you have to, in your head, go, okay, that's a chair, and then you have to say another word that begins with C. Okay. Right. And it doesn't matter what it is, but you just got to do it quicker than the other player. And just like, it just ties your brain up for that second and you just blurt out something. <laughs> and generally with us, it's just always like swear words. Just always someone saying something ridiculous. Or the things that, <laughs> the places their brain goes to, you know, like they, they come yeah. up with C and they're saying like combobulated or whatever, you know, instead of just, Cat. Oh, oh, yeah. I, was I played this on my mate Stag Do, and it was just genius. When you're at that time of the night, and of course, like I've just taught you the game, so the rules are just nothing, mm. and it's got a good bit of shouting, which I think helps to a drinking game. But also, what's good about these when you've got a new game is it. It if if you or I play cockroach soup or salad, would probably yeah. be like you know a bit easier for us. Yeah. But when you've got the good thing about new drinking games is that it. It's a level playing field. Yeah. And people like the surprise of something so silly like that. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, I can get behind that. I just need to say, and it, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, it's low buy-in. I like that. I think there's also like a level you get, like I find when I've gone to different groups, I went to a group and I, I took out code names and it was like a hard, it was hard to get into, you know, just yeah. like picking up the rules. Right. And so, and that then first I- first round's always hard, but yeah, yeah. And then I brought out like Blurble and that was their speed, you know? And <laughs> it's like, okay. And they loved it, you know? And so great, we'll just play that instead because I like them both, so whatever. Right, what are you, what you got? Number two. Number two. We're getting into your- Oh, this is the big, the big one. Oh, we've stuff. already mentioned this. So this is Cockroach Poker. Now you might think I've had two of these cockroach games, mm. but I could easily put a skull here but skull is just some people don't quite get skull yeah. right away weirdly mm. enough and i remember yeah. the first time i played it i read the rules and didn't quite get it but mm. cockroach poker is just the most ridiculous game you know it's, it's just 
it gets rid of all the kind of nonsense of poker. <laughs> oh my God, people are going to be like hating on me for that. Like the strategy. No, it just gets rid of it. It's just pure bluffing. Telling someone yeah. that a card isn't a card. Well, an animal isn't an animal. Yeah. And the fact they're all just bugs makes it even funnier that someone's, you know, sweating the decision on whether a bat is a toad or not is just funny. And not only that is we also have a little house rule on it that we also, if, if you ever get a bat in front of you, you have to do a shot. We always had this kind of pressure card. No way. And so, yeah, so you could have, we always had slightly different drinks for whatever you ended up in front of That's you. But the bat cool. was always the shot. That's cool. And it's funny because if you pick up a bat, it's like you could totally just say, ah, uh, a toad. So there's no suspicion. And then there's this bat going around yeah, the table yeah, yeah. and everyone knows. And That's then, brilliant. So, yeah. Just a classic bluffing game, really simple. It's one of those ones that I've definitely overplayed it though, but mm. for, it, it still massively works. And, you know, take it on stag do's and things. It's just fun. Where did you first fun. find out about it? Uh, on this random board game channel, uh, Dice Tower. Ah, oh, <laughs> damn it. Because it was in one of my first videos. So really? I was like, I had my fingers crossed there. It was in my Christmas video. It, pro it probably was you. And, well, no, no, no. Don't say it now. <laughs> Come on, mate. Just be honest with me, yeah? We're YouTube friends. I, but when does Tom Vassell talk about Blurball, I ask you? Not recently. Link to the video, put the card up. <laughs> yeah, there. yeah. Oh, he'll have covered it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my number one drinking game is Anomia. Have you played that one? I have heard of it. It was in one of my videos, so I bloody hope so. <laughs> um, I actually recommended this one to Daniel Radcliffe. Funnily enough, but um, how did that go? Did he? Ever... Yeah, no, he's still. It was a good idea. Are you going to do more? Yeah, I yeah, I could just watch just spin it of... out like game recommendations for Kristen Bell, and yeah, I I mean I toyed with it, but I think it was a good joke once, maybe. I mean, mm. it's not unlike me to do a good joke a second time. But so. if you keep going with a joke, even when it's unfunny, it becomes funny. Apparently, right, right, so right, just keep right, right. pushing it out. Anomia is a bit like a lot of the games I've mentioned really really simple it also really worked with that group that i was telling you about for blurble you're flipping over a card and you're matching with someone else so it's actually a bit like jungle speed you've all flip over cards and then when there's a match it's like ah head to head and you've got to get there faster than the other player but instead of grabbing something like in jungle speed you have to shout something faster than the other player and the thing you have to shout is what's written on their card so i've got something written on my card they've got something and it'll be like breakfast cereals and like actors and so I've got to quickly think of an actor and they've got to quickly think of a breakfast cereal and whoever says it first like wins the thing. Nice. And so again, like whoever loses gets to drink. How do people screw up on that? They end up, do they end up saying the other person's thing by mistake? Or they just say their thing, but it's oh, more right, just yeah. like, the screw up is just being slower. Yeah. You just can't think of a breakfast cereal and you'll say like just <laughs> something that's sort of adjacent. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. Like, and another quite raucous when you get into it. And I guess that's kind of what I like from these sorts of things. Mate, I don't know if you're going to love it in the tent. How do you feel about games with... What are the games you have that are like a bit shouty? <laughs> Cockroach soup can get a bit shouty? It, yeah, it can get a bit... Not loads that are a okay. bit shouty. Okay. So this is a new dimension to okay. the tent. Yeah, the I shoutiness. was a bit, wear, a bit wary. Well, you, we'll, play it, we'll get someone to play it once and then you'll be like, no, banned. <laughs> That's why it doesn't show up in the tent. <laughs> I thought about bringing one with like a audible timer and then Serena was like, are they gonna, is he not gonna get annoyed about that if it's like on in the background the whole time? So no, yeah. cut it off. What, what, what game was that? Yeah, yeah. Tapple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, a, it doesn't sound Random like a drug words that are just coming out. <laughs> Yeah. Why are they all that seem to be random blurple and tapple and... It's good for the Google yeah. search. Yeah, right, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah. Actual love. There you go. Doctor. Yeah, yeah different. Yeah. Okay, so I do the, the number one. Please. The actual number one. The actual, oh, because my, yeah. yeah. Do the I don't know, one. this isn't actually a game I think you can buy. You can probably buy it. But mine is Liar's Dice. Liar Dice, not Liar's Dice, but maybe either, either way. I think it's both, yeah. Okay. Perudo is like the British. Is it? Yeah. So somebody, uh, it does annoy me though when people monetize a game that yeah. always existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that. But anyway, Liar Dice, purely because I've, it's kind of the game that my friends play on a night out. We, oh God, that sounds so sad, doesn't it? But we basically just bring in a the bunch club, of yeah? dice. Yeah, genu genuinely in the club. We'd take, yeah, a bunch of dice with us and, you know, play it around a table. 
just and it's kind of got that drinking game thing. Oh, yeah. Got popular in Pirates of the Caribbean, I think. Mm. You know, yeah. back in the day. And also, I know that the way that I play the rules is, is different to a lot of people, but it kind of has its own variation. Oh god. And oh, it's just oh, kind of easy and simple and it's along the lines of kind of cockroach poker and skull it's just straight up bluffing. are you going to admit how you play it differently are you is it yeah so we do um ones are wild which i think is fairly common oh yeah, yeah but yeah. we also do it that you have to increase either the number of dice or the oh yeah that's value. how we i think that's the rule okay <laughs> but some people but they must always increase you can't decrease the other one anyway what whatever i know oh, i have okay. I, I won't okay, go into too yeah, much detail it's boring yeah People won't. That's what they're watching uh, for. They're the tuning detail. Out now. They're tuning out. They've tuned this far. Have you seen they're how dark it is? Tuning out now. <laughs> we can. Oh God. No, we can put it up. Yeah, we'll it's fine. Boost that later. We're in the woods. Mm. Um, yeah, great game. I was actually playing that one before it was cool. I was into ball games. Right. No, no, yeah, but also that because that's true of all the games. But no, like I was playing that yeah when I was like sixteen, and then I and then I stopped, and then I got into games later. But it's almost, you've, what we talked about is that almost what we said full circle, isn't it? The original drinking games. Yeah. And I kind of didn't really play this as a drinking game, but then it came, yeah, then I sort of discovered it in a board game setting, and I was like, this is pretty cool. But yeah. then people sell it in cups and all that, don't you know yeah, that yeah, yeah. nonsense? Just but a that, couple of dice. Right. But that's, also, you've got the thing where every time you lose a dice, drink. Exactly. That's why it's perfect. It's a winner. There right. you go. That's so it. Are, Five are, drinking games. Easy, uh, the best lists going. So Dice Tower, what, what are you doing? <laughs> thank you to Ed for appearing on Actual LOL briefly. Pleasure, thank you for having me. Check out his channel, it's very big. It's Dr. Hope Sick Notes. He talks about doctory things. Um, and uh, he's very intelligent. Very intelligent. And um, mm. it's very nice of him to grace a smaller channel like this. And very nice of you. Uh, uh, it's fine, just like to do my bit. And yeah, yeah, very yeah, nice yeah, of yeah. you to come down to this festival and give it a, you know. Teach, teach some games. Teach yeah, some I'm games. gonna be. I'm just going to be using it as an opportunity to tell everyone about the channel, right? That's exactly. the thing, yeah. Well, I think we should rebrand it as the actual stage. Baby Not steps, just, but yeah, yeah we're yeah. building towards it. Well, no, actual festival, right? Yes. With, with music and other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> music about board games. You know. It could happen. I've got a few songs. Have you? Crack them out. <laughs> <laughs>